Hey, well, in the NBA, folks, as far as Jersey-wise, Jason Collins, uh, the openly uh, homosexual male who's playing in the NBA, has the number one sales jersey right now. His jersey is off the chart, so it's uh, beating out everyone in the NBA right now. And uh, to talk a little bit more about that and some other things that's going on across both sides of the water, Brooklyn and Manhattan, is Eric Hicks of GameOverNYC.com. Welcome, Eric. Hey, it's good to be here. Good to Man, be here. Man, so his jersey's not doing quite, it's not doing bad at all. I thought that that was uh, predictable. I'm not naive enough to think that there wasn't something to do yeah. with publicity as far as that's concerned. But whatever reason, I guess it's something that's kind of long overdue. And but, but no good. matter what publicity they get, the Knicks are the gift. The, they just keep on giving. It's like a river uh, that just overflows. How many times do I come here and we use the, the term unbelievable? Yeah. I mean, just when the Nets had the back pages with the Jason Collins uh, coming out thing, Ray Felton gets caught with a gun, or actually his wife, ex-wife, brought the gun in, turned the gun in, and Ray Felton was in a world of trouble right now, a that, world of trouble. That's a shame, too, because what is the probability of him doing time? Are we looking at the same thing that happened to another uh, Well. NFL player. I'm not a lawyer, but I'll play one on TV okay. right now. Um, from what I understand, uh, the the type of gun was illegal. The gun laws it's here. It's registered in, in North Carolina. Right, but the gun laws here in uh, New York and the gun. We have the toughest gun laws in the country. Uh, the type of gun was you illegal. Could the ammunition man, you was could illegal. Take Mayor Bloomberg for that. Take right. Mayor Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. The ammunition was illegal, and the magazine that goes in the gun held 30 clips, and that's absolutely a no-go here in New York. So he's in a world of trouble with that. So uh, of course it affects his play on the court, unfortunately, and it affects the team overall. Well, maybe this, uh, you know, it's been said that the whole domestic thing with uh, the divorce and everything has been affecting his play on the court. We don't know what's been affecting his play on the court, but this cannot make it any better. That's true. Okay, Metal World Peace. Metal World Peace bought out his contract, or was bought out of his New York Knicks contract, and once again, Metal World Peace, we talked about it on the very first show, this was a train that we saw coming down the track, and that just was not going to work. Metal World Peace is a piece of work. Piece of work. And this is a young man you've known for quite some time also. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, from LaSalle High School, uh, the AAU circuit, when I was heavy into coaching in the AAU circuit, Metapert World Peace was there, and he was a character, a very talented basketball player, but let's say different. Different. Okay. Different. So as far as the Nets right now, they're doing pretty well, continuing to the uh, Nets, they beat the Lakers a couple of days, a few days ago. As far as the Nets are concerned, they have the best record in the month of uh, January it was. They had the best record. And the Nets have come on strong. The Nets are doing exactly what we thought the Knicks were going to do. We thought that time would, would foster uh, better team chemistry and they would perform better. And the Nets are absolutely climbing up the ladder there. And Jason Kidd, the coach, he's doing a tremendous job. Once again, got to give Jason Kidd the credit because we give him the blame when things are going bad. Jason Kidd has turned out to be a good manager of both egos and talent. Mike Woodson. Man, Mike Woodson needs to get out of there. You know, I never thought that I would say that. But you know what, to me, it doesn't matter who's coaching this team right now. For his own sanity, uh, he needs to get out of there. I mean, if... if of course, sooner, you know, in, in a little bit, we're going to talk about another person that coached the Knicks, and he had the same problem, too, but go ahead. But, you, you know, I, I heard someone describe the Knicks as the MacGyvers of losing. It's like if there's a way to lose a basketball game, the Knicks will find, I will find that way to lose it. Name the scenario from that ball bouncing off of Tyson Chandler's head after a backwards dunk to not knowing what the score is, to not knowing how to manage time. If there's a way to lose a basketball game, the MacGyvers are losing. The but New York you know Knicks what? Will but find MacGyvers are packing the house every night. And they're winning in a bank account, man. Championship doesn't matter, I guess, when you're winning in a bank. Well, it, it's a funny thing. I don't know why that's... Well, I do know why. It's business, and it's they business. get it done. All right, cool. You know what? I want to talk about some of the best basketball players to ever come out of Brooklyn. And I know there's a tremendous list, and this is a debate probably that can go on for quite forever. But I want to go to the first one I've, I've been checking out, and people have spoken to me this about him a lot, is uh, Roger Brown. Who uh, went to uh, Wingate High School? Wingate High School. Roger Brown, an extraordinary uh, ball player to come out of Brooklyn. Once again, we said Wingate High School. Unfortunately, in Roger Brown's history, um, he got kind of caught up in that point shaving scandal. With Jack Molinas. With, with Jack Molinas, and also another guy who was on your list, and I'll let you introduce him. But that kind of um, stunted his career uh, somewhat. But from what I hear, and I never got to see Roger Brown play, that he was one of the best. And it, it sort of tainted his record, you would say, for a little well, bit? Well, not only that, but people uh, originally stood away from him. You know, it was a little standoffish as far as 
allowing him. And the you got to remember to back then too, when you got into a scandal back then during the '60s and '70s, people stayed away from. Him. Right now, if you get into a scandal. Well, you would know more about the 60s and 70s than me. <laughs> Watergate, stuff like that. Okay, um, next player is Connie Hawkins, Connie who's Hawkins. also involved in the Jack Molina scandal. Cornelius Hawkins, also involved in that scandal, but Connie, uh, Connie Hawkins was probably one of the first of the high-flying athletic players. Everybody talks about the size of his hands. When you talk to anybody, well, most guys and most old-timers all, all about the best players to come out of Brooklyn, Connie Hawkins is on the top of everybody's they list. They said he brought the street game to the NBA. He brought the street game to the NBA. He's a two-time ABA championship, uh, Hall of Fame in 92, uh, MVP playoffs, ABA uh, MVP. I mean, Connie Hawkins had an extraordinary career, but once again had a hard time getting into the NBA and the ABA, into professional basketball because of that scandal, the point shaving scandal. Too bad, you know, he wasn't playing along today because it would have probably boosted his career. Well, absolutely. Right? absolutely. I mean, the world we live in today. All right, cool. Next up is Letty Wilkins, who's also was a Knicks coach who also had the same problem. So you put him in there and Mike Woodson, you still got the same problem. That's why I saved it. <laughs> Lenny Wilkins, once again, Boys and Girls High School, Providence College, a legend, won in a, uh, an NBA championship as a coach. And uh, Lenny Wilkins, once again, one of the old timers. But when you talk to the old timers about who were the greats, Lenny Wilkins' name always comes up. And, uh, and also he was seen as a class act. At one time, Lenny Wilkins was the winningest coach, and he still may hold that record, the winningest coach in NBA history. So. What, he coached at Portland, did he? He's called uh, Portland, Seattle, the New York Knicks. I mean, Lenny Wilkins. He won a championship with Hawks. Seattle, right? Did right. he win a championship? Yes, sir. And the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, Lenny Wilkins was well-traveled. That's how you get so many wins. Right. Well, too bad he couldn't win with the Knicks. No. All, right. All right. Next up is uh, World Be Free. World Be Free, a.k.a. Well, originally Lloyd Free from Canasi High School, 50-inch vertical leap, and that was on his jump shot. World Be Free led the NBA in scoring when he was with the San Diego Clippers, which are now the uh, LA Clippers, but he was with the San Diego Clippers and led the league in scoring. I think it was approximately 32 points a game. Also on that legendary Philadelphia 76 team. The 76 team that team. started individuality in the NBA, right? Yeah, because you had, you had Chocolate Thunder, you had Darryl Dawkins, you had Dr. J, who was the class at? Absolutely. And who else did you have on that team? You had quite a few, oh, a number he, of individual players. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, uh, one thing about um, my man, World Be Free, he's still with the 76ers now in the community relations department, player development uh, department, does a lot of great things in the community. Comes back to Brownsville every year for Brownsville. Not an NBA Hall of Famer, but a New York City basketball Hall of Famer. Absolutely. Good man. Guilford College also. Guilford College down mm -hmm. in North Carolina. That's right. Also, Jocko Jackson went to that school. We should The legend Jocko, Jocko Jackson. We should include Jocko Jackson in that list, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that because we're going to continue this conversation um, sometime next week. And last but not least, Bernard King. Bernard King. Fort man. Hamilton High School. Fort Hamilton High School, the 50-50 man. Nobody will ever forget when he went on the, uh, the Texas trip and he went and scored back-to-back 50-point -back games. Uh, just an extraordinary player. A lot of people com uh, compare Cam Carmelo Anthony to Bernard King, but Bernard King was something at the University of Tennessee. And as you said, Fort Hamilton High School. And he was a, he's also a mentor to uh, Carmelo, right? He mentors him, talks to him a lot, I guess. Yeah, I, well, because of the similarities, right, and I still, still think that Bernard, in fact, I know Bernard still has some involvement with the Knicks from a broadcasting angle. Well, who doesn't? Yeah, well, who was with well, the Knicks, right? But Bernard King was probably one of the greatest scorers in the history of uh, the NBA. Comeback player of the year, you know, several times his, his, uh, his seasons were shortened due to injuries. And like his brother, he played uh, with the Nets. Played with the Nets. And the Bullets at the time, who were the Washington Bullets, but because the, of, pol the because State of Warrior, politics, yeah. they changed it to the Wizards. And went into the Hall of Fame last year. Congratulations to Bernard King. One other legend I'm going to mention real quick Go is ahead. Rolando Blackman. Okay. Born on February 26th. Happy birthday, Rolando Blackman. Today's his birthday. One of the greatest to come out of Brooklyn. All right. And also, we got to talk about Staten Island sometime soon, too. All right. Uh -huh. When we come back, mapping the world for sustainability. Stay with us. <laughs> 